Hello there. I'll be playing another uh, 15 plus 10 uh, rapid game of leeches for today. So let's try to find a pair. I hope this time maybe I can be white. I was black the last two times and I lost mostly due to the time pressure. So this time I will just try to maybe to play a little faster in the openings and see what will happen. Okay, I am white, I am part with ambition. I'll just play e4. My opponent is 1782, so he is just a bit stronger than I am. So this should be an interesting game. Okay, he plays knight c6. Unusual move, I must say. I don't encounter this very often, but let me just grab the center. d5 by my opponent. So this transposes to some kind of Chigori. Um, interesting stuff. Now if he takes, then my pawn will be attacked twice. Maybe I should just push the pawn here to the bigger, the bigger center. Okay, let's do this. I don't want to waste too much time in the openings because you might have seen the last last two times how it went. Okay, now he's second the knight. What? What am I missing here exactly? Hmm. I don't see anything. Okay, let's just take the knight. Thank you. Into this zone. He's, he's probably playing for, for some kind of tricks, which I don't know. But okay, now, now this is a this is in fact very instructive. So w what to do when you have uh, advantage in material? You should not relax. You you should play your your best chess. Because lots of time I I just uh, relax and I think okay now, now it's easy it's easy win I am he's up. But it's never easy in chess. Nothing is easy in chess. Okay, so let's think how I can be best developed. Is there any threats here? I don't see any. Well, I should just develop my king side, I think, and castle. This is also an idea to play c4 at some moment. Maybe I can play c4 immediately. And then try to exchange queens or something. Well, I think we will play uh, bishop to c4, but then he can protect this pawn and kill nothing. Okay, let's just naturally develop, take the king side and castle, and put my king into safety, and then we will see what, what can he do. Okay, he plays another move with his queen. Okay, now he is Obviously threatening this c2 pawn. I could just play knight to c3. I don't see any danger in that. In that. At the same time threatening this pawn. And also I threaten against this pawn. Skewing his queen. So, okay, let's play this. Let's see, three. Now he's giving his queen away. Thank you. Very strange feeling I have to say. Okay, uh, now, now I can just play for checkmate. I, I don't see. I don't see any reason why not. Okay, let's double do it. Oh, I think this is true, I guess, checking it. Okay. okay, very short game, and I, I don't understand why 
why one of my opponents played like this. But okay. No, I think I will. I will go for another game. Uh, I I want to, to play a real game. I, I don't understand why. What happened here? So let's let's try with a new new opponent. It's difficult to say what happened, what uh, what just happened. I think he he blundered this knight for for some reason, and then he just uh, played quick quick moves with, with no sense. Okay, now I'm black again, and I'm facing e4 again. Okay, let me just play some chess with e5. I will try Petrov again. So I, I lost uh, the last last two games when I played Petrov. So, but I want to try it again. It's a fun way to play. He's taking his time. E4 players don't uh, don't often encounter petrol defense. Okay, so he plays passively. I have several options now. Okay, now, now my, my pawn is uh, hanging here. I could play something like uh, d5 immediately. Let me just put, put uh, my knight out. Okay, I'll just put my knight out. I, I'll just play simple. There is some some lines with uh, d5, and then uh, okay, he's now just killing my knight. Okay, let me let me pin the knight first. Now I'm thinking this d5 all the time. This is very passive setup for white, I have to say. This one structure. I don't really like it. Okay, now if I go d5, then he can just take my defender and then pick up the pawn. So I'm not allowed to do this at the moment. I could have done better against this. The worst feeling stuff. I have to take to take, uh, take a look in the book after the game. Okay. Let me just change this this bishop. I I want to see what, what does he want to this bishop. Does he want to exchange or, or not? If, if yes, I have to remove this to get some time. Okay, he retreats now. And now I can play d5. No, I, I'm just releasing my, my bishops. I just realized I have this marble board. Maybe this, this board is better to play. I'll just change the board. Uh, this this is more light, so I, I I like this board when I play because it uh, doesn't hurt uh, my eyes so much. It's it's easier to look at. But when when I do videos uh, with with games, um, then I, I like that design better. Okay, I'll just grab this pawn, recapture, and if he recaptures, I'll just capture.
and then I might consider canceling, and I also might consider just getting rid of this wish point here on G4 for a nice pair. Okay, he just plays, he wants to castle, so he is letting me take this knight. He will not play. He plays with his bishop, then he will pressure my pawn here. Do I like that? Not very much. Okay. Maybe I should just pass him. Okay, let's pass him. Now I have a pawn in the center. He doesn't. This should be some kind of advantage, I think. Also, he has a fair big four square for my knight, which is an outpost, so maybe he can get rid, get rid of his f3 knight and then use this nice square for my knight. Those are all possibilities. Also, okay, I have to think. So this is the the moment. Where, so now the real middle game starts. So uh, according to classical definitions, you know, once both sides uh, castle, it's, it's the middle game. So now it's time to think of uh, some some kind of plan. I still didn't finish my development, so this uh, c8 bishop is my worst place piece, so I think this is what I should be thinking about. And it, it's not locked, it's active even in here. But I think I'd like to get it out. Okay, let's check here. I was thinking this also. So I'm forcing the exchange of his darts or bishop. But after this, this knight is removed. So I could take the knight, he takes back. And then my, my knight is not doing so good. Okay, I, I, will, I will see how. the situation will unfold. I think I'm doing all right now with my time management at least. I'm not uh, I'm not in tight trouble. Okay, knight for e4. I guess he wants I don't see any threat. He, he, he likes hearing his knight probably on, on this uh, e four e four square. Maybe if I could just I could play uh, f five, expanding on the king side. I don't see why not. Just grabbing some more space. Maybe e four can be an idea in the future. After this, and what can he do? He can retreat here, and then he has. These squares, I'm not sure. Or I can just go to d4. Or I could just take, I take. Not, not something spectacular here.
Let's see if you have any weaknesses in this camp. Yeah, so this pawn is maybe weak. But I don't see what can I do about it. These pieces are all protected. Okay, so I would say this is typical Petrov position when you have a very, very active piece play. So all, all the pieces are uh, playing. It's a very, very interesting game. I'm still thinking about playing f5 here. Get some more space. I will expose my king on this diagonal. It's already the risk, and this pawn already moved, so it, it will weaken my king a lot. I don't like this. There are lots of pieces on the board and queens and everything. So I don't really like this. Maybe I just. Uh, Maybe I'm just a coward. What other candidate moves are here? Mm -hmm. I could just jump across like my rook, give out my queen. So those are all, all available moves as well. I'm taking some time here and I don't mind taking the time because it would be nice to come up with some, with some good plan. But first we should be four. We could just play c3 and then a4. b4. Let's control by that. What about knight to f4? Attacking this. This bishop. Oh, this, this could be fun. Keep on playing with the bishop, I take this pawn. Now everything is open. This can be a good pawn, I can support. Maybe this is a good idea. Okay, let's play this. So I want to take his bishop pair. He can't avoid this now, I think. This bishop is gone, or, or this bishop is gone. So he has to choose. If he takes with the bishop, I will take that. Or I can just take the knight first. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Let's see what he will do now. Well, this uh, applied square bishop is not the best bishop in the world, so okay. He decided to give up this bishop. Now I have two, two opportunities. One is just to recapture, and another one is to capture this knight. What if I just take my pawn? No, okay. Okay, now I have to count. So what, what do I get with this? So bishop captures knight. Then we are equal. So if he captures the pawn, I capture the... No, he, he will just win the pawn, I think. Sometimes I'm not good at uh, this, this counting thing to run. It's so simple, but it's, it's actually not. Okay, so in this variation, if I take this, then what, what, what will be gone from the board? So my bishop will be gone 
his nose real big one. Nice blonde real big one. His bishop's real big one. And the mana is also gone, so he'll be up to pawn. Okay. So I think the same still is just to recapture. Now the e file is open, so I should think of playing uh, the key eight at some point. Okay, c3. So he wants to to go to respond in the center. This is logical. Okay. Maybe I could play e5 and p5. Now this would be under double attack. And then later, if I capture this knight, I can get to get this pawn. If I play a knight e5, he could just play d4. Oh, or he can just take my, my, my knight here. So it's not good. So maybe at first I recapture. If he recaptures, then I play knight e5. Make a double attack on his bishop and then and on this pawn. Hmm. Okay, let's let's just calculate this. Okay, take takes ninety five. And right now I'm attacking these two these two squares. He has to retreat. And I have I place knight here, but then he can later play this d5 knight. Or maybe I can play c5 or something to prevent this. Or I could just play e, rook e8. Maybe square rook e8. I, I think he'll, he'll get annoyed with this bishop on the 12th mark point. He will play h3, and then I can I can do some stuff. But if I if I don't play this combination, he could just go right there with uh, d4. And in, in the variation I mentioned, I could uh, have time to play c5 and stop this. Let's see if this c5 pawn is protected. Okay, I don't have much time again, so let's suggest we we'll just play this variation. Again, I'm in time, time trouble. It's not 12, I have four minutes. Not good. Okay. So now I'm, I'm doing something I I don't recommend. But this is the play. When I calculate variation, then you should uh, stop after each move. So if you calculate three moves ahead, you should not just uh, play quickly those three moves like I'm doing now. But you should think after every move and double check if everything is uh, according to your plans. I didn't do this now and because I'm in time trouble again. Okay, I will learn. Like I said, I don't usually get into time trouble when I play uh, just without the camera. But uh, now when I'm talking, when I try to verbalize my thoughts, <coughs> it's difficult. Okay, he plays d4. If he's allowing, he's allowing this. And then after queen captures, he will have this this pawn targeted. And then I have my king open. And this is not so good. Okay, I'll take the bishop. 
Now that he takes back, I'm looking to play maybe c5. No, not c5, but uh, I was thinking of maybe queen to d5. But uh, let's see what it's doing. And I have to think about his f4 pawn, how to protect this. Maybe I could just play bishop b6. Maybe he captures how he could capture with my queen. This is also a possibility, so if he captures so this capture back. Or I can play just uh, g5. But then I, I'm really exposing my king. I get to keep my bishop. I like this bishop because he he's controlling his this knight. So uh, this knight on e4 doesn't have many squares thanks to this bishop. So now I might, might think just to control my queen, queen d5, and maybe bring my rook to the e8. Okay, now he's starting to attack in my light squares, which is what should be expected. Hmm. But on g4, he probably wants to go here. And he wants to protect his knight in case, his knight in case of what to d5. I think I go to d5 anyway. So this c5 idea now becomes plausible. This pawn is weak, but I can always protect it with just a uh, king to h8 or a king to g7, so I'm not so afraid. And I think I should be looking how to exchange queens to this point because I, I will be now favoring the, the end game. My king is not very safe. My pawns are advanced. Okay, I just saw I, I missed a great tactical opportunity. I should have played f5. Okay, he still he still well doesn't didn't see this. So this, this should be a winning move actually. So he's winning his queen. No, he's winning the piece. So I missed this in the long run ago, but I think I can play this now. Because this pawn was protected even before, now it's protected twice. So you see, very, very simple tactics. So in, the, in this position, in this, sorry, in this position, if this was a, a tactical book or, or a chess com puzzle, it would be rated like, uh, I don't know, 400. And, and if this position came into puzzle, came to me in the puzzle rush, I would probably solve this immediately, in a matter of seconds. But now not, not so much. Okay, so now he, he allows me to get this knight, but there is a price, and the price is this check. And then he has perpetual check. So he has a chance for a draw here if I just capture the knight. Yeah. Okay, so there is a defense to, for this move, but I, I don't like. Oh. But I am, I have only one minute, so maybe I should accept the draw here. I don't think I can win the end game with so, so, uh, so long time, so I'm just in this. Okay. So he's not playing for the draw. Interesting. 
I'm sure I can finish how to the font here. If I move my pin to just take this font, I don't want that, so let's just bring my up up here. And I think I I can defend now. But I'm really, really low on time. I'm surprised that he didn't just <laughs> play G6 check and then play for the petal here. Maybe he's thinking he can win on time, and probably he can. So now what is my strategy? My strategy is uh, not to blunder anything. So I I will probably play a little little defensive moves uh, so just just try to, to keep things together and not to lose uh, not to lose on time exchange uh, whatever i can exchange and just uh, just play passive game okay so he checks i would like this check Okay, he now grabs the pawn and offers to exchange uh, the piece. I will accept this. I'm always in favor of exchanging pieces when I'm ahead of material. Okay. Let me play it. So th this is a, uh, this is not a problem, but I want to to move this to be able to move this bishop. So. This is now attacked twice if I move this bishop. I don't like this very much. And I should bring my queen, my king into the fence. Okay. So I have to deal with this uh, file now. It's not very easy. I'll probably put my rook, rook to play something like this. Okay, he now wants to capture and give me check here. I have to be very careful now. Okay, now I'm double protecting this rook. So I think this is to go. If he captures, I will just recapture with my bishop. If he doesn't, I, I could just as well play this bishop uh, here on f6. And then, then, then I can exchange over the e file. So oh, he has uh, two pawns for my piece. So in the light of the end game, he he, he still he still has chances. He has drawing chances for sure, but he, he can only play for a win. Okay, so let let me just double check. If this works, this rook defended twice. He cannot capture this pawn. So okay, let's let's go. I will probably have to exchange it and see if I can kill like this. He can win. He'll have to exchange at least one rock for sure. Let me just pre move and he, he get some time if he decides to, decides to capture it. Okay, now I'm playing like bullet. I have one little minute. 
is not very pleasant. Well, they come in, they come in cups. Got seconds to move it. We can really save the day. Just I got some time and now can we worry about it just in one game. Yeah, but essentially it's my queen. So I, I always keep saying queen but I keep king. So I have to centralize my king and uh, maybe bring my bishop behind uh, behind enemy pawns. This is some strategy. Also I want my uh, pawns on the light squares. He wants to exchange, point, exchange. And I'll just have to bring some pawns here. So my, my pawn should be on the light squares, and um, this is what I want that my pawns be on the light squares and his pawns on the dark squares. So my pawns so does not uh, you know, block my bishop, and also uh, his pawns can be high. Okay, now we have to give up one pawn. Okay, this is very nice. And it comes with a check. Okay, now he has this his pawns on, on the light squares. So this is what he wants. Um, okay, so what should I do now? Maybe I should just try try to get my king over here and I don't care about this pawn because uh, it cannot go forward I'll just guide, guide it here so I think this is a good strategy I don't have much time to to overthink this but I think this should work okay. the, quick, the good, uh, good thing that the bishop uh, with the bishop in the end game that it, uh, it can control both sides of the board so I can just put my bishop in the middle and I, I can control uh, everything. Okay, let's just put this bishop. What should I bring it behind the lines? Maybe I should put it here, it's more fun. So I think I, I am this square, okay. And then I'll continue with my plan and I should just to, to take these pawns. I don't mind sacrificing this bishop uh, to stop the g pawn because I, I will win on the queen side now. He can also blast his pawns here. I can always blunder, so it's I, it's never a winning position. It's a winning position when uh, when I deliver checkmate or when he decides. Okay, now he probably wants to do this. Okay, can try. I don't want to give away my points. Just put like that. But I think uh, I, I'll capture all his pawns so, uh, while he's doing this, so it's, I guess it's okay. Okay, he's moving forward. Hmm. It's not so easy after all. I'm bring my, my king closer to the action. Okay. And here. Here. That will be in good zone. He, he has to move. And then I can grab the pawn 
what are he he, he plays now he uh, lose a prop unfortunately he he's obliged obliged to to play a move in the in the game of chess If he plays b6, I think the best way to recapture is uh, b6, and then I have passed pawn. Okay, right resigned. Thank you for the game. Well played. Okay, let's quickly analyze the game. Let's see what what kept, what was happening, but I think. The computer will probably show that everything was okay, pretty much equal until this point. And you can see this, I think this, this point is the most important in the game. So like I said, this is a 400 uh, rated puzzle on, on chess.com. And if you get this puzzle in any puzzle book or puzzle rush or, or anything, you'll see immediately, oh, okay. I mean, I mean you have to see this in, in a second. And this is the problem with uh, with adult tutorials. We don't, we just don't see these things, and we have to to train ourselves to see this. And I don't know how much time does it take because uh, I'll be doing these kind of puzzles for the lights last, let's say, four or five months, repeatedly, and still I, I missed this. And not not just I, but but look. Uh, so he missed this here by allowing me uh, the the fork. I missed by not playing the fork. Although I did, I did threaten this uh, this knight, so nothing, but it's nothing. He could just move away his knight, and uh, now he again missed to the fork. So he missed this twice. I missed this once. This very simple, uh, very very simple tactics. And now, okay, he had a chance to to draw the game here, I think, but he he missed this chance. I don't know if he he did it on purpose, or maybe he didn't see it, maybe he didn't want to draw. So anyway, uh, let's see the analogy board. I'll just turn on the engine. I want to see what uh, will the engine agree with me. Okay, let's just see this this position here. Okay, minus zero point two. Okay, because he sees the he sees the, the draw. So if I play here here. Let's come back there now. Not too much. Wait, okay. Uh, yeah, I can stop this chat. Okay. Okay, so there, there was even a way to, to save this uh, this light. But it, it is by by this uh, this uh, draw draw opportunity. If I played anything else like here, then he could he just close the draw. Maybe even a win. Plus five, right? Okay, he played this knight. And this is now very important. Okay, so he missed more than I thought. And we, we both, both missed lots of stuff. So I can see how the game went. So I played here, here, and now I forked. this night and now he had the drawing opportunity so now he should play this 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 okay now he's just going for the draw okay that's all right Okay, what about this other variation? Let's just see this. So if he went here. Okay. Okay, but uh, it all comes down to, to, to this fork, which we both missed. 
Okay, let's just see if there were any other critical moments in the game. So this was a critical moment. He had a chance to draw. Here he has some advantage. Okay, let, let's see if some other mistakes I made, maybe. I made one blunder and one, one mistake. So what, what was the blunder? The blunder was bishop g4. Yeah. Oh, this this uh, from the opening. I was thinking what to do about this. And I, and I said, okay, I'll use the role of the bishop and I develop this on, on g5 to g4. And the engine prefers b6. Just controlling the center. Okay. Okay, it's instructive. So why? Because now, now there is this variation he missed, so he could have played uh, bishop e6. But he could he could have played uh, knight takes e5. Now let's see what what would happen there. He will, he will just exchange everything. And he will end up winning this pawn. It will be a pawn up. So this this uh, move I didn't see this of course. So this move allows him to uh, to capture this pawn. And then after, because I don't have to capture his uh, bishop at some point, and then he has queen here and queen protects the knight. So he could uh, with the pawn here. I didn't see this. Okay. And what was the this was the blunder? What was the mistake? Okay, here. The rook f6 was best, and what, what did I play? I played it. Okay, so I played rook f7 here. And he says rook f6 is better. Okay, but it's not much better. So it's a minus 2.7, and if I played rook f6, minus 4.2. Okay. Just taking it away, his queen for good. So now I'm allowing this, but okay, it's, it's not a big mistake. I was uh, very low on time, so I just played, played for, for safe moves. And in the end, it all, okay. It was a winning position. Okay, thank you very much for staying with me uh, until, until the end. I hope you you like this game. I hope you enjoy this show. Uh, like I said, this only proves my my main thesis that on uh, on our level, the most important thing is tactics. And by tactics, I mean uh, very simple tactics, very simple patterns. We, j we just have to train uh, our eye uh, to to see to see these these very very basic patterns and very basic tactical opportunities. And I think that alone could could uh, win us. Uh, Many many games and uh, help us to to improve greatly because we cannot do complex uh, calculations and see five or six seven moves ahead if we if we don't see through this uh, uh, one move uh, or tactical opportunity. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, then please uh, click the like button, uh, subscribe, uh, leave your comment below, and uh, see you soon. Cheers.